Best Thing That Ever Happened is one of the most emotionally bitter episodes of BoJack Horseman. It examines the shaky relationship between the titular horse and his on-again, off-again girlfriend slash agent, Princess Carolyn, as well as their toxic codependent bond. It's a gut-wrenching examination of a decaying partnership between two people with similarly traumatic origins who deal with conflict in notably different ways. Interestingly, it is one of only two bottle episodes in the entire series, along with Free Churro, as the story itself has no major set pieces, just a series of tense and volatile conversations between our leads at the restaurant Elefante. Though sometimes brutal and hard to watch, it is a pivotal episode in the series as it showcases the breakdown of Bojack's longest lasting relationship, colored by resentment, fractured communication, and broken promises. Don't you break my heart, Bojack Horseman. It's important to note that this is an immediate continuation of the events of the episode The Bojack Horseman Show. At this point, Princess Carolyn becomes Bojack's agent after being an assistant for 14 years. PC finds a project called Mitch's Life, and Bojack signs on after he hits it off with the creator, Cuddly Whiskers. PC later joins him at the table read, and the pilot script goes over so well that the two enthusiastic studio executives have no notes for them. We love this show. Bojack, I'm calling it right now. This show is going to be as big as horsing around. In a bout of imposter syndrome combined with with a desire to distance himself from his sitcom roots, Bojack belittles PC's advice to not question their good fortune. Bojack and Cuddly Whiskers retool the script into an edgy mockumentary with tacky anti-catchphrases. At the premiere party, he approaches Princess Carolyn, who showed up despite how rude he was to her before. She congratulates him, but refuses to kiss him, stating while she's still his agent and friend, she's not interested in pursuing him romantically anymore. I don't want to spend the next seven years of my life falling in and out of love with you. I've wasted too much time waiting for things to happen and I'm not gonna wait anymore. Best Thing That Ever Happens begins the following morning in the aftermath of the disastrous premiere of the BoJack Horseman show. Wallowing in self-pity from his own bad judgment, BoJack begs Princess Carolyn to comfort him at home. PC finds him face down in pizza boxes and does her best to cheer him up. He subsequently puts her on a pedestal, saying he would be directionless without her as she's the best thing to ever happen to him. You're my lighthouse, my Garmin. You're the little plastic table they put in pizza boxes to keep the pizza from getting smushed. Your Princess Carolyn. But Bojack has used the best thing that ever happened many times before, and PC knows this, as showcased in season one's Say Anything. You say that every time something bad happens. Some of the things he's referred to as the best thing that ever happened to him include not being nominated for a People's Choice Award, getting caught with a pound of cocaine, impregnating a sex worker, and sneezing on Marissa Tomei. What started off as a non sequitur joke has become an increasingly worrying pattern of behavior, usually involving Princess Carolyn cleaning up the mess for him time and time again. She calls him out for this behavior in the episode and attempts to set professional boundaries, which he immediately ignores in favor of serving his own impulsive whims. Bojack's aggrandizing ends immediately after they sleep together, as PC wistfully hopes he won't destroy her aspirations for love again. From episode 1, we've seen that Bojack is commitment-phobic, prone to indulging in numerous meaningless hookups to fuel his own hedonistic desires. Fundamentally, PC knows that Bojack isn't going to be the right partner for her due to his selfishness and immaturity not aligning with her desire for a family. However, they have become so emotionally intertwined that it's difficult for her to separate completely from him, despite his persistent disregard for her feelings and well-being. Ironically, even PC's season 1 flame Vincent Adultman showed more concern for her feelings than Bojack did. The episode continues with an annoyed Bojack waiting for Princess Carolyn to arrive at Elefante for a dinner meeting. In the previous episode, Old Acquaintance, Princess Carolyn drops the ball on two major time-contingent projects for Bojack. Flight of the Pegasus, headed by Major Director David Pincher, and Jelly Bell, headed by Kelsey Jannings, whom Bojack has been trying to make peace with after her firing from Secretariat. Through some competitive meddling by Rutabaga Rabidowicz and Vanessa Gecko, PC ends up losing both projects for Bojack on New Year's Eve. To make matters worse, Bojack is too cowardly to tell Bradley Hitler Smith that he doesn't want to be involved in his Horse and Around spinoff, Ethan Around. He hides behind his ruthless publicist, Anna Spanakopita, who does Bojack's dirty work for him. You are not a television star. You have no talent, and I am forgetting your face even as I'm looking at it. Anna is also the one who pushes Bojack to fire Princess Carolyn, despite being one of PC's last major clients at Vim. PC does her best to stall for time, delaying the inevitable with the help of Sandro, the head waiter at Elefante. Since Bojack bought Elefante on a whim in season one, Sandro has become the de facto manager, despite the obvious strain it's put on his relationships with his family and therapist. Bojack's dismissive nature ignores these statements. He delusionally claims the restaurant practically runs itself, showcasing again his primary concerns with his own perceptions over the well-being of others. Even Bojack's weak attempts to separate from PC at this point are being prompted by Anna Bonacopita's manipulation. He has to resort to using flashcards as he talks to PC to not meander away from the points he was coached on addressing. Bojack's singular goal for the season 
Nolan thus far has been wanting to win an Oscar for his role in Secretariat. Bojack believes that by winning an Academy Award, he'll be remembered and worth something in the eyes of the public. With this motivation, his behavior becomes increasingly self-centered and cruel, allowing his ego to trample over the feelings of friends and colleagues. This is because Bojack doesn't have any other internal drive for his own self-worth outside of performing. All he knows and understands is that his primary source of validation comes from an audience. He was taught this during his youth by both the forceful assertions of his mother Beatrice and from watching grand gestures on various television shows, internalizing it as an expression of love. Despite this tenuous hold on his self-worth, Bojack is still notoriously picky and flaky regarding the roles he chooses. His unreliability is, ironically, the most reliable aspect about him. Bojack tries to fire Princess Carolyn, but she immediately redirects the conversation into discussing a few other roles she's been seeking out for him. She explains how this is the first time she's had a major slip-up in 23 years. To her, their arguments have just become a part of their routine, and PC sees it as nothing more than his typical silent treatment, which will eventually end when Bojack clamors for more work. Their relationship is a constant struggle between new opportunities and damage control, with no signs of change in sight. Bojack heads outside as PC follows him, and claims that because he's in a sexual relationship with Anna, he's now passively following her instructions without thinking for himself. She points out that she stuck with him even when nobody wanted to hire him, despite how much he's weighed her down professionally. It's not like he makes this company any money, and he does seem to take up an awful lot of your time. Princess Carolyn is steadfast, continually going above and beyond to help Bojack get a wide variety of roles, even though he continually complains. Resentful of his abrupt dismissal, PC doesn't hold back any of her frustrations about Bojack. This is for the best. I no longer have to lug your talentless, self-centered, self-sabotaging, deadweight carcass and faded talent around my neck. PC is referring to the metaphorical usage of the term albatross, typically referring to a large seabird, An albatross is also an insult originating from a poem by Samuel Taylor Coleridge called The Rime of the Ancient Mariner. In it, a sailor wrongfully shoots an albatross with a crossbow and is cursed to carry the weight of the carcass around his neck. Today, it is commonly used to refer to an annoying burden or hindrance that is difficult to get rid of. Harsh words, but not unfitting of the excessive demands of time and emotional reliance he constantly saddles PC with. PC storms back into the restaurant to get a drink as Bojack follows after her, desperate to get the last word in and try to clear his guilty conscience. He's approached by a waiter pleading for help in the now short-staffed kitchen. The B story of the episode revolves around the hapless waiter and a few stray customers becoming staff by default, trying to make a good impression on a visiting food critic. Bojack bullies the waiter into cooking for the patrons before confronting PC. He accuses her of actually enjoying saving Bojack, claiming it makes her feel better about herself by comparison. This comment harkens back to PC's assertions from season two, that she impulsively takes care of others when she doesn't know how to help herself. In this situation, Princess Carolyn vehemently disagrees, citing Bojack's repeated poor decision-making as the root cause of her forced interventions. Help me! I slept with a gaffer's wife, and now he's not lighting me properly! Princess Carolyn! I threw up on Elle Fanning in a bounce house! Bojack mocks PC's tone of voice, completely ignoring her valid criticisms. This type of interaction is often seen in classic codependent relationships like Princess Carolyn and Bojack's. It generally involves a giver and a taker. One person, in this case Princess Carolyn, acts as the caretaker or enabler of the taker, in this case Bojack, who takes advantage of the enabler. While commonly seen in relationships involving substance abuse, it also frequently is seen in narcissistic relationships, often fostered by a lack of boundaries from the codependent giver and a lack of consequences for the narcissistic taker. Common fight tactics used by narcissists involve using name calling, blame shifting, ridicule, and deflection. We see Bojack use most of these in his arguments during the episode. However, they are much more acutely observed in the parents of both PC and Bojack. Developmentally, PC and Bojack have had very similar upbringings that would lead them both towards codependent relationships. PC's mother, Cutie Cutie Cupcake, was an alcoholic, often too drunk to work as the live-in maid for the wealthy Wallace family. Butterscotch and Beatrice horsemen ignored their son in favor of fighting over infidelity and money in addition to their alcoholic tendencies. Where PC and Bojack differ, however, is how they both dealt with the chaos. PC would cover for Cutie from a very young age, preventing her mother from being fired and her family from becoming destitute. This constant pressure also laid down the foundation of Princess Carolyn's workaholic tendencies. By the time she reached high school, PC had taken on so much responsibility that Cutie became dependent on her, even trying to guilt trip PC into not leaving to go to college. On the other 
other hand, Bojack found that the only way he received conditional love from his parents was through performing, like by singing the lollipop song at dinner parties. He internalized this during his childhood along with his parents' problematic relationship with alcohol. He got more into stand-up comedy by telling jokes at a high school party after having a few drinks. Sadly, he does this at the expense of others and ends up hurting the feelings of a girl who was kind to him at that party. Eventually, Bojack learned to do whatever it takes to excuse his own behavior or avoid responsibility as long as he gets a positive response from an audience. Did you ever love me at all? Bojack proceeds to follow Princess Carolyn into the bathroom and says he struggled with this decision, even consulting Anna. PC snaps after hearing Bojack say he respects Anna's opinion, insinuating he respects her more than PC despite their history together. His oblivious comment shows how flippant he is with burning bridges out of his own petty self-interest. This launches into a knockdown drag out fight, scaring off the majority of the customers. Citing her lack of professionalism as a major issue, the pair resume their argument in the meat locker to cool down their already heated tempers. Bojack's professionalism comment is, of course, projection. He is self-aware enough to experience the guilt of how his decisions affect others, but he is not emotionally mature enough to actively stop himself from repeating the same patterns. Despite his obnoxious bravado, Bojack is a deeply insecure person and wants to be liked by others, even when he knows he doesn't deserve it. So PC's comment about him wanting a mommy he can sleep with is pretty much spot on. Bojack wants a female figure that represents unconditional love and understanding, who selflessly takes care of him out of a genuine concern for his well-being. He lacks the insight to realize he needs to be responsible for himself first to then be able to truly love somebody else. He constantly confuses sexual attraction with love, allowing himself to be overly reliant on others to the point of dependence. PC calls Bojack out on this by highlighting his constant attempts to sleep with most of his female colleagues, something we see repeatedly throughout the series all the way through season 5. PC focuses on Bojack's tendency to look for the negative as a self-pitying masochist by saying 10 nice comments and one mean comment about Bojack. She knows this will get under his skin as Bojack frequently plays the victim, using negative remarks about himself to affirm his own deeply ingrained self-hatred. We later see this firsthand in Stupid Piece of Shit, showing that his internal monologue is incredibly harsh and cruel, casting massive judgments on the decisions of others, but even more so on himself. As he repeatedly shoots down her compliments, she laughs in bewilderment. Despite their persistent conflicts, PC and Bojack still have many fond memories with each other, especially during emotionally fraught periods. This is an important aspect to remember with codependent relationships. Remembering the happiest times spent with each other tends to keep them bonded, even if circumstances can start to change for the worse. PC keeps chasing after those emotional highs, hoping Bojack's behavior will improve if she does what she can to help him, despite how infrequently this happens. While the relationship lacks the balance needed for any long-term relationship to thrive, it had not gotten to the point of Princess Carolyn wanting to completely sever ties with Bojack, despite how far he's tried her patience. Part of PC's inability to let Bojack go emotionally is that she feels a responsibility to damage control his self-destructive actions. This is most notable in Escape from LA as Bojack, reeling from his breakup, abandons his movie secretariat. Despite PC urging him to return to set and prevent a lawsuit, he opts to spend months away in New Mexico. PC may lack strong boundaries with Bojack, but she's had no trouble distancing herself from others like Rutabaga, Vincent, Judah, or Ralph once they've crossed a line with her. I do. By the end of their cooldown period in the meat locker, Bojack and PC are interrupted by the waiter, and a fire that's broken out in the kitchen. It's very telling that PC is the first one to comfort the waiter, giving him a bag of frozen peas for his burnt face. Meanwhile, Bojack just lights a cigarette using the flames. Bojack is comfortable living in chaos, while PC is comfortable managing chaos. The donkey patron turned waitress enters the kitchen, stating all the other customers went home except for the food critic, who still wants her mushroom risotto. Only Princess Carolyn knows how to make it. She volunteers to help, but Bojack dismisses her and she reluctantly leaves. With Elefante in the rearview mirror, PC hears a song on the radio, pleading with her to break your pattern of needing to fix other people. While hilarious, the song appears to be a manifestation of her internal crisis, wanting to follow her better judgment and breaking her own toxic cycle. It's incredibly telling that even when fate itself is unmistakably saying, don't do it PC, she still ends up going back to the restaurant. Don't Just keep driving away. 
Just another example of the ways PC constantly enables Bojack. She is present in his life as the supportive female figure that Bojack never had growing up. Despite being a very capable person, Princess Carolyn does exhibit quite a few codependent traits. She's overly responsible, exhibits caretaking behavior, prioritizes the needs of others above her own, appears to have low self-esteem in romantic relationships, and possesses a high tolerance for inappropriate behavior in others. As mentioned by Raphael Bob Waxberg in the Bojack art book, Princess Carolyn is constantly struggling with spinning plates. She struggles to achieve balance between her work life and her personal life, as one aspect tends to fall while the other is more resilient. This also explains her resentment towards Vanessa Gecko, who she perceives as having everything PC wants, but with substantially less effort. Being a mom helped my career? I really can have it all! Even the risotto feels like a very deliberate dish choice by the writers. While not especially complex, risotto is notorious for requiring a lot of attention to cook properly and ensure texture consistency. The perfect dish to showcase these major aspects of Princess Carolyn's personality. Bojack comments on when they first met, which he completely misremembers due to being blackout drunk the actual first time they met. Even the very first instance of PC and Bojack meeting, PC went far out of her way to help take care of Bojack's mistakes, to such an extent that Bojack didn't even know about it. A dangerous precedent that purely encapsulates how the relationship would play out. Though she's talented at her job, PC openly admits that she doesn't know what she would do without it, even if it makes her miserable. This may also be a subtle reference to her relationship with Bojack itself. Though their dynamic seems unsustainable, she doesn't know what she would do without it. Bojack still compliments her, stating that no matter how bad things get, PC always lands on her feet, admiring her resiliency and adaptability. I do love you, by the way. I mean, as, as much as I'm capable of loving anyone, which is never enough. I'm sorry. PC smiles and proudly presents him with the finished risotto for the food critic. Is it possible you letting me go is the happy ending? After dismissing the Yelp critic, Princess Carolyn finishes off her string of compliments. Bojack calls her a good friend before PC begs him, as a friend, to not leave her agency. At the end of a rope, she needs a favor like this from one of her oldest, closest relationships. Granted, it's a big ask to stick around a failing agency for six months, but she promises to never ask him for anything ever again. Bojack thinks for a beat and gives her his answer. What do you think? No. This episode ending is a shocking gut punch for both PC and the audience. Bojack flatly ends his representation with Princess Carolyn, effectively a death sentence for Vim. Without their biggest client on the roster, Princess Carolyn has to fire Diane, and Judah has to do some immediate restructuring to lessen other financial impacts. He also encourages PC to approach the change as an opportunity to restart her life, which she does by going on a date with Ralph Stilton. By the end of the season, Bojack's social circle slowly diminishes in a culmination of all of his poor decisions. Throughout the series, Bojack Bojack tends to force intense levels of responsibility onto others, most notably the important women in his life. At the end of season one, he fires Diane after she leaks a few chapters of One Trick Pony. Despite it being well received by the public and Princess Carolyn, Bojack insists on rewriting the book himself, claiming it's not a flattering enough depiction and will impact how he's perceived by the public. Upon failing to rewrite it himself, Bojack questions Diane at a ghostwriter panel, asking if she thinks he's salvageable as a person. He dumps all of the responsibility onto her to validate him in public, as he's incapable of viewing himself separately from the perceptions of others. In season two, he threatens to autoerotic asphyxiate himself in front of then-girlfriend Wanda Pierce, all because of his own self-perceived weakness after accidentally telling Wanda he loves her. In his mind, he's keeping score with her and believes that he would be weak for admitting he loves her first. Wanda happens to have the most solid boundaries out of any of his previous partners and breaks up with him once he shows no sign of growing out of his own toxic habits. Bojack even attempts to place this kind of imposition onto Honest Bonacopita for most of season three, until they discover his nomination for Secretariat was a mistake. She ghosts him despite his desperate pleas for comfort. Anna feels no emotional obligation to a sinking ship like Bojack, as she spells out to him during her lifeguard story in That's Too Much Man. Because there are some people you can't save. Because those people will thrash and struggle and try to take you down with them. Notably, after the events of Best Thing That Ever Happened, Princess Carolyn is missing from Bojack's kitchen in the opening credits. In That's Too Much Man, Bojack drunkenly crashes into the lawn of her apartment complex in the middle of the night, yelling that he's sorry in a ham-fisted attempt to make amends. Princess Carolyn just sighs and heads back inside with Ralph. He's enacting the same patterns as before, but this time, no one bothers to try and stop him. And they don't actually communicate again until roughly a year later during the episode Thoughts and Prayers. The phone call initially begins with what appears to be a sincere apology 
mythology to PC before Bojack completely botches it, revealing ulterior motives. From here, their reconnection attempts are gradual but with increased boundaries from Princess Carolyn, and it lovingly dovetails back once PC attaches Bojack's name to be able to sell a script. She flubs and confesses to Bojack that she panicked and forged his signature, as he would be a big enough star to secure the funding for it. Surprisingly, he actually agrees with no hesitation, as a sign of gratitude for all she's done for him. I'll do it. What? You want me to do it, I'll do it. God knows you've done enough for me. They apologize to one another, becoming friends once again. Ultimately though, this episode really did foreshadow the end of the series. Though they would reconnect in season 4 and beyond, by the end of season 6, Bojack and Princess Carolyn go their separate ways once again. Bojack needed to seek accountability on his own without the constant aid of PC, always there to put out his fires and clean up his messes. Princess Carolyn needed to distance herself from Bojack and break her cycle of codependency in order to align every area of her personal and professional life. And in the series finale, though they do reconnect personally, Princess Carolyn pointedly decides that she will not work with Bojack again professionally, because though it was a few seasons before their final split, Bojack and Princess Carolyn breaking their toxic cycles within their relationship and cutting ties really was the best thing that ever happened. No. Folks, thanks so much for tuning in to another BoJack episode breakdown. I want to give a huge thanks to Tracy, who pitched this episode breakdown to me and wrote the lion's share of the script as well. It's a great script. Please follow her on social media. A link is in the description. Also, let me know what episode breakdowns you want to see next, as long as you don't say free churro.